How to Identify Pseudoscience Using Objective Criteria This video presents a straightforward algorithm that can be used to identify pseudoscience by asking four simple questions. The debate over the demarcation criteria between science and pseudoscience has spanned over 2,000 years in the philosophy of science and epistemology. While falsifiability and falsification are regarded as both necessary and sufficient criteria for demarcation, the four questions presented in this algorithm cover other criteria, such as logical positivism, verifiability, repeatability, and post-positivism. The first question one must ask to identify pseudoscience is, does the information attempt to describe, explain, or predict things about the natural world? This question covers the criterion of logical positivism in that the information must be sensibly perceivable in the natural world. This criterion is important because even if the information does not explicitly label itself as science, if the information attempts to describe, explain, or predict things about the natural world, then the information is operating in the same capacity as science. If the answer to this question is no, then the information is neither science nor pseudoscience. If the answer to this question is yes, then proceed to the next question. The second question one must ask to identify pseudoscience is, can the information be falsified? If the answer to this question is no, then this means that the information cannot be proven wrong. And if the information cannot be proven wrong, that means the information cannot be metaphorically killed, and that means the information is not falsifiable. Information that is infallible that cannot be metaphorically defeated is not falsifiable, and information that is not falsifiable is pseudoscience. If the answer to this second question is no, then the information is pseudoscience. If the answer to this question is yes, then proceed to the next question. The third question is, have there been attempts to confirm and falsify the information? Attempting to confirm the information covers the criterion of verifiability. Attempting to falsify or disprove the information covers the criterion of falsification. Moreover, attempts to confirm and falsify the information can be performed by parties other than the original source of the information, and this covers the criterion of repeatability. If the answer to this third question is no, if there have been no attempts to both confirm and falsify or disprove the information, then the information is pseudoscience. If the answer to this third question is yes, if attempts have been made to both confirm and falsify the information, then proceed to the last question. The fourth and final question is simple. After attempting to falsify or disprove the information, is falsification accepted by the source of the information? That is to say, is there acknowledgement that the information was wrong after falsification? Accepting falsification usually comes in the form of updating or correcting the information to account for the new information which falsified the original information. Not accepting falsification usually comes in the form of not updating or correcting the information and maintaining the same old information and ignoring the information which falsifies or disproves the old information. This fourth question covers the demarcation criterion expressed by post-positivism. If falsification is not accepted, if the answer to this final question is no, then the information is pseudoscience. If the answer to this final question is yes, then the information is not pseudoscience. Information that passes through this algorithm that is deemed not pseudoscience can be further classified as good science based on qualities such as rigor in methodology, robustness and experimental design, just to name a few. Thank you for your time and attention, and hopefully this algorithm helps to distinguish the difference between information that is science and pseudoscience.